Hello everybody and welcome to part 22. In this part we're going to be looking at fixing a problem a few of you have run into already in the comments and messages to me and so on, but a problem that some of you will likely run into when you try and make your game run in full screen mode. Okay, So first of all, Game Maker has a very simple solution to allow you to run your game in full screen and to toggle between full screen and windowed, and let me show you what that is. If you click on the little cog uh, for game options, which brings up all of our global game settings, that's where we set our frame rate, etc. And we go to platform settings, windows, and come down to graphics, we get a bunch of options for how our game is going to display. And several in here are to do with full screen. One is start full screen, another is allow full screen switching, and the scaling option at the bottom is kind of important as well. Um, I'm going to tick allow full screen switching, and what this means is it's going to allow kind of the universal shortcut of alt enter. Uh, on a Windows program to work with our game and to allow us to swap between windowed mode and full screen mode. Make sure once you've done this that um, scaling uh, in this in this window that says scaling here we've got keep aspect ratio ticked. That'll make sure our um, because our our game isn't the same kind of resolution ratio as our monitor um, in my case at least. So if I were to stretch uh, if I were to go to full screen mode with our game. Um, with this to full scale, it would start stretching and everything would appear wide and, and stretched. Instead, we want keep aspect ratio and it's going to give us some black bars at the side just to make sure everything still looks correct. So I'm going to click apply. Now, when I run this, uh, in order to actually demonstrate how this looks and what happens, I'm actually going to have to swap to view from my webcam for a moment because OBS, the thing I used to record, and quite a lot of tools actually I've tried to record, um, don't really handle like the swapping of uh, a program from window to full screen super well, super easily if there's like a delay, and unfortunately you need to see what happens fairly quickly. So I'm going to swap over to my webcam now. Um, you can still see the screen and everything going on here, just the same. And I'm going to run this now. I haven't done anything extra since then. So our game will start up in windowed mode as per usual. Here it is, that's our game, respecting the rules and our menu down here. Now keep a close eye on this menu because you'll see the problem that we run into uh, when we go to full screen. Obviously the first issue is that our uh, Enter key is actually tied to controlling our menu, um, so that's going to be a little bit of a pain. So you're going to have to watch quite quickly to see the problem that happens here, because we're essentially going to start a new game very quickly. <coughs> so hopefully you saw that, you can rewind and just watch that as many times as you want. It doesn't look quite right, in fact I'll just show it over and over in the editing so you can see the problem. The problem here is the uh, menu has seemingly teleported into uh, the wrong area of the screen. And also you can see our black bar transitions aren't really working very correctly. So obviously this is kind of a big problem, right? How do we go about fixing this? Well, before we talk about why this happens in the first place, what we're gonna do is we're gonna not rely on Game Maker's built-in way of swapping to full screen, and we're gonna set up a full screen um, swapping system ourselves. Firstly, so that we can use um, some different keys for full screen. Um, rather than alt enter gives us some choice there and also so that if later on we need to do anything else fancy whenever we change between uh, full screen and windowed that we need to control um, we have a space where we can do it um, it just gives us a lot more control if we actually do these things through code rather than relying on game makers kind of black boxed methods where we don't know exactly when and where in code this stuff is happening okay so I'm going to go back to game options and platform settings, windows, and graphics, I'm going to untick allow full screen switching, okay? Uh, leave keep aspect ratio selected, because that's still going to be important. But that just means we're not going to use that built-in method of swapping to full screen, okay? Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new object, and I'm going to call it O game, and I'm going to mark it as persistent. And this object, we, it's a good object to have in general. It can be something you can use to control things like... Um, uh, music or, or anything that you've got like persistently going on uh, throughout your game on every room of your game and so on and stuff that you might need to track and globals and uh, that kind of thing can be useful. I sometimes abuse these kind of objects and just stick loads and loads of different functions and subroutines and stuff all going on in a single persistent O game object, but it can be a very useful thing to have. So I'm going to have this object called O game and before I actually add anything to it, I'm going to come to a first room of our game that loads 
and I'm gonna drag it onto uh, the instances layer here. I'm just gonna pop it in the corner just so I know where it is. It's invisible anyway, but just in case I need to remove it or add it to a different room instead. And in an instance creation order here as well, I'm gonna drag OGame right to the top just to make sure it's always loaded before anything else, just to prevent any issues that might cause. Okay, so how I've decided this wants to work for our game, just to show you you can really do anything with it, is I'm gonna have Control F be our shortcut to go to full screen. So I'm gonna add an event. Now, how do we check for two keys at once? Well, we can we could do it in a step event and do like a check for if both buttons are pressed, but there's a pretty simple way we can do this just by uh, adding the key press F event and then at the start of it also checking if keyboard check VK control, okay? And the nice thing about that as well is it will register on the press of F while, VK, while con the control key is held. So if you're holding F and you tap control, it won't happen. You have to specifically hold control and tap F, um, which is quite a nice way of, of, of simply setting that up. Now, the obvious way to swap between full screen, um, we've got two functions that can help us here. We've got window get full screen, and that'll tell us whether or not we're in full screen mode and window set full screen, which obviously sets us to full screen or windowed mode, okay? So you might think now what we wanna do is if window get full screen is true, then window set full screen false, and if window get full screen false, set window full screen true. And we could do that as like a little branch uh, if else statement very easily, but um, there's a way we can do it in just one line. Um, and there's a way you can do a lot of like uh, toggles and things like that in a single line. Um, and that's just to use uh, our good old exclamation mark friend to invert something, okay? So I'm gonna type window set full screen, open bracket, and then we wanna set either true or false. So what I'm gonna do is write exclamation mark, so not window get full screen. Open bracket, close bracket, close bracket for window set full screen, semicolon. Let me maximize that so you can actually see this line of code properly. So all that does is we're going to return either true or false from window get full screen, uh, swap it to the opposite. So if it's true, it'll be false. If it's false, it'll be true. And then apply that result to window set full screen. So that'll set us from full screen to windowed and from window to full screen. Really easy way to set lots of different, um, any kind of toggle is to be like toggle equals exclamation mark toggle. And it'll just set it to the inverse of itself if it's a true false Boolean, okay? So let's check to see if that's working now. I'm just going to pop back to a web camera vision here and hit run. Uh, we did place the object in the room, didn't we? Yes, we did. So hopefully now when this runs, um, I'm going to press control F and the, ex the exact same thing is going to happen, except now we can, uh, uh, we're not skipping ahead of the menu because we're not pressing enter. Okay. But as you can see, it's doing the exact same thing. So now we need to deal with this issue. So why is this happening? Not to mention the issue you may have noticed with the black transition bars and they screwed up when we went from room to room. Um, the problem is you might remember when we set up drawing this menu in the first place, uh, we didn't draw it using the regular draw event, we draw it using the draw GUI event, okay? So now most of the things that you draw in Game Maker are drawn to what's called the application surface and that's kind of like a magic white a uh, magic whiteboard to onto which all of your game stuff is drawn, all your uh, your player sprites, all your backgrounds, all your everything. And then that is eventually rendered to the display based on its various settings. In this case, we've stretched it to full screen and we've kept the aspect ratio correct so it's going to draw these blank bars. So nothing from the application surface will ever get drawn on these black bars. Um, but draw GUI doesn't draw to the application surface. It draws directly to the display, okay? Um, by default, it's aligned with the application surface. So as you can see, it still thinks our window is starting up here and it's about like this big and it's trying to draw it in that corner there based on the 1024 by 768, even though the display now is 1920 by 1080 on my monitor, okay? And by default, uh, the GUI is set to be size uh, minus one, minus one, which makes it automatically fit itself to whatever the display is, okay? So when we go to full screen, it'll become 1920 by 1080, and when it's windowed, it'll be the size of the window, which is 1024 by 768, which is what we want. But we want it to be 1024 by 768, 
all the time. Now all we have to do is just set that at the start of the game, okay? So once we set draw GUI to be a certain size, it'll be that size um, until you change it, okay? As I say, by default it's set to minus one, minus one, which means it's gonna automatically fit to whatever the display is, okay? So I'm gonna quit this now. Okay, and then in uh, still in our old game object, you can come back to the workspace and do it if you want. Um, add event and add the create event. But as I say, I like doing it just from in the code now. So just right click if you want to and just go to add open event and create. So we can get that in here as well. You'll see it's appeared in the workspace as well, just the same. And in here, what I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna introduce you to the wonderful concept of macros. So I'm gonna type a hash symbol macro res underscore w1024 so our resolution is an important thing and it can determine a lot of different things in our games and honestly it's something we should have decided if this were you know a proper long-term personal or commercial or a game project you know if this wasn't for the sake of a tutorial and for the sake of teaching you things slowly one bit at a time what we should do is determine what our game's going to resolution is going to be very very early on and um, think about it and think about why it's going to be that resolution and try and commit to it because it's a difficult thing to easily change later on for example if i wanted to change our resolution we've got this whole menu screen to take into account how we've positioned everything in here to fit the screen how we've positioned level elements to fit certain things it's a very important thing Okay, so some of you will be now thinking, well, why are you only telling us this in part 22 of the series? And that's because, you know, we had to start somewhere, right? <laughs> um, and talking about resolutions and stuff isn't exactly the best introduction to uh, teaching you how to make games. But it is an important thing, and it's something you now know that if you didn't know before. It's something that you want to decide early on. Um, so, because now... In our project, we're pretty much stuck with our current resolution, which is 1024 by 768. Well, we're not stuck, but changing it is is, is quite a bit of work, so we have to then change all those menus and all that kind of thing. Okay, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some macros that track our resolution. Um, uh, what this means is that these are basically going to work as the same as variables, so I can write res w anywhere in the code, and it's going to mean the same as writing 1024, okay? Uh, what's the difference between this and creating a variable? Okay, well, creating a variable, um, the clue is in the name. A variable can change. Um, a variable can be altered and um, change from one thing to another. It can be local in scope to a specific object and so on. Macros are different. Um, they're sometimes thought of as constants, and that's true to a point. And that they're a variable that can't ever be changed, so they can be useful just to call things that we know are always going to be a certain value, and that is sort of true. But what, how macros actually function is that at runtime, when you run the game, as I said, anywhere I have typed res w now after writing this line, um, this will get uh, removed from the code, and 1024 will be written there instead when the game when the game's actually compiled and run. It's not actually going to change the project, it's just going to change it in the code that's compiled, okay? Um, what that means is you can also write uh, lines of code in here and other things. So you could write, say, like a dice roll uh, as a macro, and the macro could be irandom6. And then everywhere in the code that you write dice roll from that point onwards in this object or any other object, so you only have to declare them once, they're global in scope, um, you're going to get this there instead. Okay, it's going to replace that with irandom6. So you can do lots of fun and interesting things that way. But here we're just gonna use them to store a couple of numbers that if we wanna change them, we only have to change them in one place. Um, just in case we ever do wanna change our resolution, we make the work as easy for ourselves as possible, okay? So I'm gonna write macro res w, that's the width of our resolution is 1024, and res h is gonna be 768, okay? That's literally all I've done this for is just to make it so that we don't have to write these as magic numbers everywhere and then you know making making things harder and harder and harder for ourselves if we ever actually do want to change uh, the internal resolution of the game, okay? But that's not really itself important to this fix. The, the fix is still only a simple one line of code. It's going to set our GUI to be a fixed size, okay? So display set GUI size. And as I say, if this by default uh, is this, which means that the size will just be whatever the display happens to be, okay? 
but we don't want that. We want it to be whatever our resolution is, and our resolution is the size of the application surface. So the application surface, when you're in window mode, um, is obviously 1024 by 768, which is the size of the room. When it goes to full screen, the application surface doesn't resize, it is simply stretched to fit the display. And that's where this whole problem is coming in, so we need to make the GUI match, whereas the application surface will match on its own. So I'm going to type res w, res h into here, okay? Make sure I've got the, yeah, this is the right way around, width and height. Cool, and that should fix uh, the issue of our menu being in the wrong place when we change from window to full screen. So I'm going to run that now and come back to our webcam. So here we are in window mode, and here's the uh, the menu down here. I'm going to press Control F, go to full screen, and you can see the menu is now in the correct place. But there is still an issue. Watch as I start new game. <laughs> Rat row. So, <laughs> as you can see, our menu is drawing over these black boxes. Um, and as I said before, nothing on the application surface can draw over these black boxes. But draw GUI, uh, the draw GUI event, when it draws stuff, isn't drawing to the application surface. It's just drawing to our game window, okay, our, our full display. Um, so it doesn't really care about these blank boxes. Uh, the coordinates are aligned to the application surface, so 0, 0 is still up here. Uh, but if we were to type a negative x coordinate, it would be off the side here. If we were to type something bigger than our application surface, um, we'd be over here. Okay. Now, there's not really an easy way around this. Like, draw GUI is supposed to be able to draw over these black boxes, and it can be a useful thing to be able to do sometimes. Like, maybe you want to, um, maybe you want to draw independently of the application surface. Maybe you want to draw some sprites to cover up those black bars. You know. You know, there has to be a method of drawing over those black bars, and that's what a draw GUI accommodates. Um, so there's no way for us to get a draw GUI to draw under the black bars as such. So the only real fix we can have for this very sort of specific circumstance where we want to use draw GUI for the menu because it helps us coordinate the menu properly, but we also want to be able to have it kind of float off screen, is something you might consider a bit hacky, but I think it's a perfectly elegant solution, honestly. And that's, we're going to just draw a black box. We're going to draw a black box over it because we can, and it's really easy. So I'm going to go to O menu. I'm going to open up the draw GUI event of draw menu. And this is where we were drawing all of our menu stuff before. And just at the bottom here, I've already made some space. Um, Oh, in fact, we don't need to draw it in the, the for event, because that'll draw it multiple times. Yeah, we don't need to do it in that. We, so we can do it outside of the for statement. Um, I'm going to set draw, set color to C black. And I'm going to do draw rectangle. And what if we remember what our variables in here were, we've got a GUI width and GUI height. We've buried in the size of the display. Uh, or of the GUI um, when we create this object, which is another reason why it's important uh, for us to have um, made sure that in the instance creation order in our menu room, uh, our game goes first, so uh, it, it sets the GUI to be that size in case we wanted to set uh, the game to start in full screen, okay, because that's one of our game options as well. Because otherwise, if we start in full screen, then it'd be 1920 and so on, and then it might get this before we set it, and bad things can happen, okay? So GUI width and GUI height, though, are going to contain those values for us. So I'm going to type GUI width, so right at the edge of the GUI, and GUI height minus, say, 200, and GUI width plus, I don't know, something big just to make sure it covers the black bar properly. You go nuts with this, let's say 900. And GUI, um, and GUI height is our final one, so it's right at the bottom of the screen. And outline false. Okay, and just to, so you can actually see this box in place, let's set draw color to actually be see white as I run this now. And I'll probably again need to come back to the webcam. That's Control F, and you can see now, uh, in full screen, we've got this big white box drawing here, and that's going to draw <coughs> over this. And all I need to do now is just set that to be black, and we've got what we came for. Okay, uh, so let me close this now, and quickly set this back to C black. Run the game again. Come back to webcam. Control F. And you can see there it is, and if I hit continue or something like that, it draws nicely over 
the menu so we don't have that issue anymore. So that's really all there is to it. So now I'm just going to go to um, main options, windows, uh, graphics. I'm going to take start full screen in here as well, just to show you that it works from both ways. So let me come again back to the webcam and just run this again. Just so you can see that we can now start the game in full screen and get all those values correctly. So then we've got this at the bottom, it's got those that black box drawing over and I can press Control F any time to go to window mode. That might be what you expect to happen more, so feel free to set your game up to be like that if that's how you want it to be as well. Um, and that's it. You might have all kinds of different issues depending on your own personal game and personal project uh, between going between full screen and window. Luckily this game is quite simple so the fix for everything is quite simple and hopefully you've learned a bit from this just about how uh, the draw GUI works in relation to the screen, how the application surface works, how full screen and windowed mode works because it can be more complex uh, than you might initially expect. Um, and hopefully this gives you a bit of a grounding so you might start to be able to understand and break down where certain issues are coming from in your own game if you're having them. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. I thought it was pretty important to get this, uh, this stuff covered and out of the way, very important part of finishing off the game, making sure we can actually change uh, our window to full screen if we needed to. And uh, yeah, that's it. So I'll catch you guys next time on part 23. Thanks guys. A quick reminder that none of these videos are possible without the help of my amazing Patreon supporters. These guys support what I do, and in exchange they get to see some of my videos early, they get to access all the source code for free, and various other bits and goodies. A special shout out in particular and in no particular order to Mark Lentz, Dan, Mike Blankier, Run, James Grumley, Cody Hodkinson, Adam, Rovan Darlin, Harold Guidry, Valp, Matt Coat, Lewis R. Pereira, Nick Slabish, Stephen Hagen, Michael Ward, Jason McMillan, Thomas van der Neind, John Bernard, Seanathan, Robert Churches, Owen Morgan, Zinan May, Turtle Time, Bowser the Dog, TJ, Marcel Gisinger, and Patrick Guffey. You are all very cool people. Thank you very much for existing. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.